Okay, the next the next speaker is Rock. Most of you know him. He's one of the persons behind NixCon. Um, Rock's also the one who actually brought me to Nix. I used to work with him together about a year ago, and he did some very weird stuff that I really didn't want to even look into. And and just about a year later, I think uh, I'm completely infected. And yes, he wants to talk about make Nix friendlier for beginners. Um, okay, I'm on. Um, so welcome. Um, I have a. I'm a loud breather. Okay, better? Good. <laughs> okay, so this is... I can breathe less. <laughs> okay, so um, this talk is a bit... It's any, everything else but technical. Um, it's something I've been basically doing the whole year. It's more. Uh, it's about trying to convince people how to use Nix. Uh, somehow successful, sometimes not, but um, it's more of a what I see people struggling with. And this is like the report out after a year of s telling people, yeah, Nix, 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 right? So, um, so yeah, the tweet, the conf, my Twitter. Um, what I mean with fl friendlier? Um, first, uh, this is very uh, kind of would be a, if I would give you now the time to questions would be really bike shedding like because what's friendlier it's very subjective so uh, I will make a definition what I meant with friendlier is like if we can fix something in one day that will produce the 80 percent of the like the good stuff uh, the the usability improvements that's what I'm aim aiming at right there are some really basic things we are just forgetting about it because we are too deep already, right? So, like, how the beginner enters, it's, um, you will see in the slides, it's, it's quite a different experience that we as the users. Uh, it's basically also the UX from the developer's perspective, how they see it. Uh, and what I mean also, usually, we, you know, there are kind of two things which I like to emphasize in the UX, how to achieve better UX really cheaply um, without any over-engineering which we tend to do is first, the first one is you always go for what people expect. Um, and it is really easy to do what people expect because uh, you just see what they're using already. And then you, ov what overlaps, um, like a simple example is if you plan a park and you see those crossing on the edges, well, that's the usability thing, right? You didn't plan it correctly. And this is exactly what we need to do in our tools. Um, and there are multiple ways. The second thing is, um, which I think is not only the, the UX part, but it's also security one, is the default, right? What do you choose for your default values? It's also a usability thing. And um, this sometimes is, can be quite different. Uh, so I think we should focus on beginners, um, uh, the, the newbies to the project, because that's actually how we will uh, yeah, we'll rule the world, right? Um, World domination. And yes, actionable things. I want whatever we take from here to actually code on it. And two days is totally enough to implement every of this. 90%. Um, so basically, uh, we'll go through the stages, how I see people are going when they're um, entering Nix world. Uh, is first, they have this first contact, right? Um, and then after that, they try to install it. Uh, then they got to know all the tools and they read the documentation and then they, if they, like if every of these, they succeed, they kind of start contributing, right? So this is like a normal flow you want to convince your coworker um, to start doing. So the first contact, nixos.org. Uh, so it's not really, um, these are more like complaints we can fix, uh, but it's, the first thing is very NixOS centric. Um, a lot of developers I try to convince, I have to actually copy paste them the URL, you know, oh, just add slash Nix, and you will know everything about Nix. So I think this should be a landing page uh, where you get everything uh, about um, Nix and NixOS and how they manage. Like, it's, this is very hard to do in one page, but it should be like at least slowly getting there. We should have a landing page for both projects so you know how to choose one. Cause there is a low, well, there is an overlap of features, right? So we can do this. Um, 
everybody goes, um, come on, ask Docker people, that five, six minute video, everybody loves it. That, that's how you sell and to the developers. This is the, the, the thing. You don't need to place ads, you need five minute video. So people go, it, it's funny, but yeah, I even click a lot of times and probably you as well. Um, then usually when it comes, it's like uh, the next step is uh, it's an uh, issue of trust. Um, who is using this, right? So why one of the, why Go is so successful? Well, you know, Google starts with Go, uh, right? So, um, and they are using it. So that's where, so people want to see that, you know, they're not alone. So that they, there is a community and that there are actually companies using it and kind of having the, the, the use cases that they use or examples how they use it, that would be a nice thing. And I guess it's also nice for companies to have these kind of white papers. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be extra visible, but it should be there because that's um, nice. And what I found really interesting is that we should be honest. Like we're not the best tool out there yet. But we, being honest is like, it, it pays off in the long run. And if we are not good at it, we say we are not good at it, um, you know, continue carefully reading documentation, for example, right? It's, this section is not good. It's just honesty really pays off and then people appreciate it. Um, so yeah, like, we can completely say we are small as a community, but we have big ideas, right? That's, People will understand this part. So the next thing, this is, I mean, the front, the first contact is really small, but it's, if I would not be sitting next to a person uh, convincing him to go, you know, now try and install it, they will never do the second step, right? It's like people who are uh, just coming over the internet, uh, searching on the internet, searching for a solution and seeing it, that's, there is a potential there. Uh, next thing is installing. So. Uh, who has problems installing Nix and is Nix user? Uh, probably you don't know, right? Because you you installed Nix in 2008, right? Um, and it's just running since then and it's happily. And uh, there are many, uh, first thing is we are using curl, right? And it's, yeah, it's not started, not started. It's a huge debate. I don't care. But um, the, the whole thing, even if, let's say this is okay to do the installation, it's breaking. It's really fragile. And we as Nix, we should, we are the ones who are saying like, hey, just, you know, copy the closure. It's everything is there and it should be that solid, right? Um, I have a solution in the next slide, but um, Nix OS install, that's one of the things that a lot of times happen is it should be offline um, installation. Like uh, half a year ago, it wasn't when I tried and it's, I think, I guess the problem is not that it's, uh, we don't want it to be, but it's hard to test and there should be a way to know that we can install it offline. That basic setup, I, I mean, right? So when you do Nix configure, that basic setup should just uh, 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 run without touching the, the internet. And to go back on the first thing, right? So uh, what um, I did at RoadCode, uh, what we did at RoadCode was um, we, we went with building a standalone executable, right? So, because uh, we are we are a Python developers, so we of course solve this in Python. Is this right thing? I don't know. Uh, it's very easy to do it, and it's nice, quick. And I did it in two hours, right? And since then, we don't have any problems. Like if a build, if a download uh, stops or the connection is slow, how to resume and everything? No, you download the whole thing, you run it, and you have an offline installation. Uh, well, that was one of the requirements to have, but how did we do it? Um, so in Python, there is this thing, um, if you create a folder and you put inside the underscore underscore main.py and you zip that thing and you execute it, that Python file will get executed. Uh, now, in zip file, you can also put the whole closure of Nix, right? And that install, um, uh, that, uh, that Python code will actually extract the tarball, unpack it, um, and just install it, right? And th that's the whole point. Like, as, the, as being deep in Nix, you don't see the benefit because it's like, yeah, I, why would I care? But this is actually saving a lot of customers a lot of overhead, a, a lot of bugs, right? Like system is down, this is not working. Uh, this is that 80% which you can do in one hour or two, right? That's usability from per beginners, which we are not seeing as a, um, 
Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, why Python? Uh, also, uh, you could use any other tool if we can compile and then just uh, have a binary statically linked. Uh, but Python is more or less on all the platforms. To write a simple script which work across Python 2.3 and Python 3.5, it's possible. Uh, and for that little functionality which you need to untar and just install, it's doable. It's not that hard. Uh, so it's it's a quick solution. We could deploy it tomorrow. That's the thing. Now, then if we want to improve it to have this standalone executable in another language, because it's for whatever reason better, let's do it. But this we can have tomorrow, right? Um, tooling. We already talked about. Um, uh, Ilko talked about uh, that we should improve the command line tool. Um, I did my research. Um, I took the, uh, I, in the slides there are only two tools, but I uh, also looked at not apt-get because that's really ancient and the, the, I don't get a command line interface there. Uh, makes a bit sense, but not that much uh, in the new age of hipsters. Um, so I took the example here is how they install packages, right? Is it, it's Exactly um, how we do it makes no sense, and we want this, right? It's um, I, I actually picked um, basically only what we can do t in the tomorrow. Uh, that that I only picked few commands which are overlapping over all package managers, right? I, I didn't go through all of them, all support everything. I just want the basic. People want to install packages, and people want mix install something, right? Uh, the uh, other side of it is uninstall, right? So. The same thing, like when somebody runs Nix uninstall, you should just run Nix env-e, right? So it's in your head, in your language, you already see how easy this is to implement. Do you know how, you help, how much you're helping the beginners? Like a lot, a ton, right? Because the first thing is uh, people don't read documentation when they are trying out the command line tools. That's how it is. They even don't open man page, but they kind of, the first thing they say, oh, I want to install a package. Nix install, and they wrote it, and I was like, enter. It was like, oh, stop. That's not how it works. You, it's like, this, this is the, that path of the UX which you, the, the users expect, and you should provide it, right? Um, so, so, by the way, historical uh, notes, uh, uh, this was actually uh, copied from the RPM interface. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Um, to to repeat the thing, this was um, so the uh, current situation how we have it. Uh, it's uh, taken from the RPM how they did it in 2001, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Okay. So in from the 90s, right? Um, I, I'm just saying, like, it's not that the thing that is this is broke. Like, we have broken tools and everything. No, we have good tools. Tools are working. It's just. That 80% what people expect, and this is uh, the really important, the UX of the, the for developers. Next set of commands is search, right? This is the next. Uh, how do you call this package, right? And then they search for it. Like everybody has search commands, right? Um, <laughs> right? Uh, it's okay, right? I mean, I, I don't care. Like you know, for me, ZShell autocompletes, but for a beginner, ah, you know. Um, you, you want this, right? Uh, the opposite of this, install packages, right? Um, it's listing the packages. It's, this is also, what do I have installed so I can uninstall it, right? That's a common thing. And yes, it's, did I do it right? Or did I, I was, uh, the presentation was done around four in the morning, so probably I did mistakes. Uh, oh, that should be dash dash installed, right? But okay. Yeah, this was from, uh, I, I started in using Nix in 2010, uh, so it's still, yeah, so there are still users doing this way, just for the camera. Okay, um, the next thing, oh, hi guys. <laughs> okay, see, um, in, interesting things happen. Um, um, Upgrade command. It's uh, some people call it update. So there was what upgrade update. Um, I, I don't know. I started calling it upgrade because it was the most common one. Because a lot of projects have aliases, and the upgrade was you want to upgrade. So we do this. Of course, we also in all the commands I wrote two commands because um, 
that's another topic uh, which we already covered. We will start using attribute uh, paths or names, right? Which is awesome. Um, we should do it because it just makes like less things to know is better, right? The less is more. Um, and then yes, this is how it should look. And oh, and the next thing, which are you would not believe it, but are awesome, and really important for. The, 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 how people feel the project, how they do they trust it. It's not about, yes, they, it actually doesn't matter about the beginning when I said that you need use cases. What they want is colors, SK art, and emojis, right? <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm serious, right? It's, no, I'm, it's, this makes it crispy, it looks like it's new, it's like recent, this is the, you know, the hot thing. It's like, oh, it looks like, almost like Docker. You see, that familiarity, right? From the outside, okay. Um, but, um, so, what I wanna emphasize here, it's even different point. We already said we are moving that way. Um, doing the UX is not like, oh, let's just code it and it's gonna be like this and it's good. This is the wrong approach. It's, it's a, Path to failure, because uh, you know once you give something out, people expect it, and it's hard to break that promise. I would suggest we use current tools we have and start experimenting and building tools that will call those sub tools, and let's experiment. I mean, these commands are make they make sense. We can uh, I already implemented it. Um, we need to experiment how users perceive it. Does it make sense? And it's okay to implement this in kind of I don't know Python. Uh, Perl, whatever, until, and then once we freeze the functionality, the commands, yes, then let's implement it how we wanted it, right? It's that research uh, of what users, what is the expected way, what's the best way, needs to take uh, stages. And that's, I mean, it's a basic how uh, the designers work or UX guys. Um, we need also, in our tools, bring that um, uh, workflow. Um, so yeah, emojis, remember. So we're gonna have emojis? Sure. Yes, emojis there. Yeah, Please? Uh, what do we have? Pony. Oh yeah, we have ponies, some sing. Yeah, okay. Uh, more the better. Um, <laughs> documentation. <laughs> uh, so, documentation, it's, um, Everybody is not happy, but nobody wants to do anything, right? That's the whole kind of thing. Um, uh, I want to go different way and ask ourselves, why do we want documentation, right? Uh, why do you write documentation? Is it for yourself? Um, like, why do we write the whole manual? Is, what's the reason? Is my opinion bringing somebody who is a beginner to the advanced level, right? And, you know, you cannot just, um, you know, I, uh, when I started Spanish, right, you just not, um, we, I will never learn Spanish if you just throw me a, a dictionary, right, and it was like, manual, here it is, learn it, done, right? It doesn't work that way. How you do it is you need, uh, you need to be taught, you need somebody to teach you, right? So the teaching part is the problem, and when you do documentation, it should be about teaching, and the, the, once you know why you write documentation, you also clearly more defined how you write it, right? It's, you have to, when you're teaching somebody, and teaching is really hard, especially writing documentation, because you don't sit next to the person, you don't see the expression when it goes like, what happened, right? You don't see that, you have to take it through steps, make it sure it's kind of bulletproof, and uh, learning this, uh, it's very hard, there are even profession about it, technical writers, right? But it's, but even basic stuff in the Nix, like in open source community should be dealt with it. Like you should, your manual should be done in a way where they teach and then they don't tell. So the outcome of this documentation should be teaching and not telling, okay? Um, so there is one uh, which thing which I always point people to because it's just enormous resource and it's the, that lib folder, you open all these files, it's amazing thing what you can do with the language, it's just hidden, right? Um, I'm not saying we should use doc strings, but we should document that. I don't know how, 
whatever we do, um, it's documented and it's documented good. So we have the documentation, we just don't expose it. So this is like, you never point to uh, somebody saying, hey, just read the source, right? It's like, or read the doc strings. It's no way, right? It should be there. Um, but yes, so this is one of the things we can fix probably in the sprint. Uh, question there? Uh, no, just a rem uh, remark. The problem is even one step before it took me over two weeks to figure out that there's a third manual for Nix packages. Oh, oh yeah. So that's actually the discoverability in the, the like getting to um, uh, like first contact with Nix. So you know that, oh, there is every project is a, has a documentation. So that would be... Not, Yes, there is a documentation for Nix packages. Yes, good. Okay, but you see, this is okay. So I already told this, but we should teach and we shouldn't tell. Like this should be the approach we take. And I'm not saying that manual we have currently it's you know, throw it away. No, we the manual is good. Uh, it's it has everything inside, but it's I will I'm using it right, and I'm a few years developer uh, of Nix, or kind of trying to be, right? It's, we need tutorials, right? Which are going to tell you how to use Nix. What are the types? What are the, you know, basic types that, like, tell you, go through, like, you know, usually if you want to teach somebody to drive, imagine you'll get the, you know, oh, new BMW, you give him the BMW manual, and it's like, you know, that's it, read it and drive it. Doesn't work like that, right? You have to take the hand and take them all the way step. If you see they fail, you know, you cry with them, right? That's the whole point. Like, um, so this is uh, So, and then the last thing, um, this, might, this might be a bit personal, uh, but kill the wiki, right? Uh, the wiki is not documentation. Uh, actually, the wiki is abom abom abomination. It's basically the worst part of documentation. Right? Because um, have you ever taken a class where the, you have multiple teachers? It's, that's the wiki, right? Everybody writes in their own style. But okay, you can read different, you know. But everybody teaches differently, right? And, and sometimes actually happens is, uh, you know, as the developers is, uh, you started, oh, let's just set up a wiki and then let's wait because documentation will come, right? They do the basics and then it will come. It's like, and then the beginners um, come to us and it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we don't have time. Just, you know, update the wiki. Um, no. Now imagine being at the Spanish class and coming there and it's like, oh, there is a bug in the, the, the notebook and they say, oh, just go fix it yourself. Seriously? It's, we would turn around and go, right? It's, so wikis are not documentation. Um, more, uh, <laughs> you know that when you have in the primary school usually happened to me, it was like there was one jerk uh, being there, uh, you know, just being loud, right? And this is, and it takes the whole, steers the whole class. And if you consider yourself being in that class, like everybody fails there, right? It's because of that one person. And it, this is really easy to achieve with wiki style. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm better removing all the, the wiki we have than having wiki because no documentation is better than false documentation. Um, some more I'll you know, um, I find that I'd rather figure it out on my own than actually write, uh, like, giving, uh, having false promises. And then, you know, yeah, this was in 2006. Whoa, okay. You know, I know this will never work, but does the beginner? Um, yeah, uh, one thing I also keep firm belief is that uh, if you keep documentation in the wiki, there is no way you'll have it in the place where it should be, which is next to the code. So you should treat documentation as code, like we treat JavaScript as a programming language. We also need to keep documentation close to code. Um, no, it, it, uh, no, come on, it's JavaScript. No, JavaScript in the beginning was really hard language. Only when it has tools, we could start reading it. I'm no joking. It's good language now because of the tools, right? And the same thing we need to apply to documentation. You know, that's um, and having it alongside the code helps a lot because usually the ones who are the teachers 
are the developers, and they should be, right? Especially in the open source communities. In companies, you have special creatures. Um, yes. Okay. So, who is to kill the wiki? We do it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, the last step, right? Um, so, let's say the person goes through all of this, all the pain, does documentation, does extra homework, um, decides to contribute. Um, what I, we found, I think we saw from the slides from Elkos was that, uh, which year did we convert to GitHub? 2012? Uh, that was like after 2010, and there was like really a spike up, right? This, this was a good decision, not because GitHub is awesome, but because it brings that social effect, and um, you can argue it's not, but we have proof, right? It really spikes. Um, uh, Git, it's also the discoverability. So the thing I mentioned in the beginning, also from the code point perspective, it's more discoverable as a project. And people is like easy to contribute, even if it's just a typo, right? Um, and yeah, the, the whole PR, having a review process before something comes, um, people see this as a barrier. I, I'm seeing it as a, uh, as a teaching process, right? So this is where you learn. You commit something and people tell you, like, hey, there are better solutions. And after that pull request, you, you come out smarter. And that's the whole point. Even I sometimes comment on pull requests and me as a teacher, I learn stuff, right? And it's, that's also the process. It's, if you don't understand something in a pull request, ask. You know, maybe the implementer will actually tell you and you will know more, right? Pull requests are a, a process of uh, to learn, right? That's at least my experience is a good thing. I mean, eventually they have to get merged, so you have to end up discussion, but yes, it's a review process. Um, so yes, then the next thing I want to mention is, I think, Doman, yes. So he posted the tweet that we are receiving 440 almost pull requests per month, right? Um, and then uh, we know it's a lot of pull requests, right? And we close quite a big chunk of it. Uh, the question was like, how many uh, committers do you have? Like the push, uh, right? 65. Um, how many active, really? So it's not about like pointing out who is an active. That's not the point. Um, I want to point different things out. It's there is a barrier which kind of people don't even notice that the pull request need, needs them because uh, they are not tagged automatically, right? I think pull requests to some extent, is it this a Darwin thing, uh, does something gets rebuilt, should actually include all the, um, you can get the top level, we can automate a bit of it, like just to know who is actually the top level packages that are being changed, who is the maintainer, add them automatically. I think this is possible via Travis and some shell scripting or Python or Perl or JavaScript um, or Haskell. Um, so automatically assign maintainers to review pull requests. Um, this is the D thing, right? Because if a maintainer who is actually listed there would know that somebody updated, he would go there and review the thing. Uh, in not every time, but in 90% of the cases. And this will offload the one who has pull request a lot, right? Uh, yes, the question, there is a mic. Um, I also wanted to say, as a contributor, it's not always clear if it's going to be reviewed or when, or who's going to do yeah. it. So uh, I think it it's... It would be really cool. Uh, so having these automated things, uh, I'm not saying we should go all the way, right? This is whatever we can do, let's do it. Right? Um, that's whatever we can do in the sprinting days, let's just do it and, you know, like how, how the Docker or the chorus guy says, like, ship it, you know? Um, let's do it. It really will bring the effect, right? Um, and yeah, so this is a bit, I'm gonna, before I press, disclaimer, uh, it's a bit controversial how I wrote it. I'm not good sometimes at expressing without my hands. And, um, let me wait between you judge. Um, committers should be, in, be invited to step away if not having enough time. Um, this is not to say to kind of, oh, you don't have time, go away, right? This is not thing. It's, it should be, a, there, if there is a way in, in the, this core group, there should be also a way out, because maybe next year, 
uh, I will not have enough time. And I would like, so what's the perceived value is, we have 65 committers, uh, right? Uh, so now somebody looks and would like to be a committer as well and have enough time, he sees it as like, oh, there is enough guys, right? It's, it's, I'm not needed. And that's the, uh, how it is perceived and why nobody is actually uh, coming uh, as a new co uh, committer and having the time. And uh, it's the other way around. I want to have a lot of this cycle that developers can come and go out and just... Re uh, it's okay if you don't have time. I mean, it happens, right? Babies get born, marriage, you break a leg, you go surfing. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, so I kind of pointed out now all the where I see, uh, at least from my, let's say this was like a year, a bit more progress, a year and a half when I was going to conferences and talking with different companies and trying to convince them to use Nix. And these were all the points, right? There are many more, but this is something I pointed out uh, that is solvable. Um, now this topic is a bit, bike shedding, as I mentioned, so everybody has their own opinion. Uh, but if you, when you ask questions now, and, or pro do proposals, because we need them, um, can you try to stick into that, do it in the two days time, and um, bring 80% of the value? If you have some proposals and questions, or if I did some mistakes, um, we can talk about wiki later, but uh, yeah, um, this is my, Last slide, so uh, thank you. Yes, we have about, I think, 10 minutes for questions. Um, yeah. One question is already pending, and afterwards we also have an announcement, so please don't run directly away after the talk. Hi. Um, about the pull request thing, I yeah. think automating um, tagging them is a really good idea, um, but I uh, consider this also a problem of GitHub itself, because um, I want to have the possibility to tag and uh, assign uh, maintainers for issues or pull requests, but I don't want to have uh, push access to master, because I, I myself consider pushing to master a bad style, and I don't want to have that right but I want to be able to do uh, sorting out uh, issues, closing them if they're already done or something, and uh, assign tags and so on. And I don't have that uh, possibility on GitHub. And I asked GitHub uh, like two times, I guess, maybe three times, uh, almost a year ago now, and it's always, um, yeah, we are thinking about that. And I guess if we as a community can uh, go to GitHub and say, hey, we would really like this feature, I guess maybe we can get it. No, I'm we not, will not sure. get it. <laughs> um, just um, we are too small. They don't. Uh, they care, but not enough for us. Um, it's okay. It, this is how the world is, right? But it's true that we cannot get into the perfect world where everything is automatically tagged. But you know, having a tag, if a, just adding a like a responsible there, that's possible uh, through a Travis hook. Uh, which then figures out, we have Knox already, which does the build. Why not build something there around it that will... It, this is possible. I'm not going into extreme. It's like everybody wants, you know, ice cream with everything on top. Let's just get, you know, the, how to say, cane, right? Like, just basic stuff. Um, just in terms of narrative documentation, uh, uh, I think Little Man's Nix Pills does a great job at that, and maybe it might be a quick win if we could hook that up uh, or make it more visible on the NixOS uh, org website. That might be good. Yeah. Um, the, those who you don't know, uh, is it public now, right? They released it already? Uh -huh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I think there is a lot of these tutorials how to do the, you know, the teaching part. Um, I, I'm bad at teaching. I know. I need to improve. And it's like everybody here, I guess, should improve. Um, yeah. Other side. I, I don't have a recipe how to improve. Like just try it and fail. You know, the same thing. Learn to learn how. To, you know, learn how to teach.
Yeah, so uh, I want to respond to your uh, remark about maybe we should make it uh, more visible, for example, these blog posts that Lethal Man has uh, wrote, because it's excellent, actually. Uh, but in my opinion, the Nixos community has always been about doing, people just taking initiative. So make sure you actually take that initiative. So not only, of course, it's good to have ideas, but uh, this could have been, for example, in this case, you can just make a pull request to the Nixos website, and I'm sure it will be uh, added, let's say, within a day. So this is typically something yeah. that can be qui done quite quickly, yeah. and there are probably many things. So if you want to do something, just do it. Yeah. So actionable small things um, we have in front here. Uh, I think that's the whole point. Like we, uh, we could go really like do the whole analysis, but we know those little things that we can actually fix right now. I mean, uh, so uh, this idea of having Nix install, uh, Nix uninstall, uh, Nix shell, and so on commands, I, I really like it. I mean, Echo already mentioned it in his talk. Uh, by the way, it should also be extensible, like the Git, where you can just add a new subcommand. Yep. But uh, about the Nix upgrade command, I, I think actually that one shouldn't exist. Uh, Which one? The Nix upgrade command. So maybe the underlying command should still exist. But I mean, uh, like when, when I when I uh, try to update an imperative package, I, I usually prefer to just use uh, Nix and I again. Mm -hmm. Because that has more predictable or like more intuitive behavior. See, uh, the thing is, you're thinking from your perspective. No, uh, no, no. Thinking but, from but, the beginners. Yes, but from the expect. beginner's perspective, like, okay, from Nix upgrade, uh, it's it's more intuitive than Nix and view, sure, but it's still like very confusing semantics. And if we if you make like a nicer uh, syntax for it, uh, that, that 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 won't make the semantics nicer. So. Uh, Definitely, I'm saying we should put a bit of lipstick on a pig, yeah. right? But this is really, these five commands are across all package managers. People expect these commands, right? And they are basically, if you're using Nix, the package manager, they have to be install, uninstall, um, list, search. I mean, maybe you could just make upgrade and, and synonym for install, but... <laughs> I mean, you want to see how it works? Um, How do I do it? Uh, bigger? Um, this part doesn't matter, it's just function that runs command. But there is a main command with a bit of um, documentation. It has, uh, this is the subcommand, which is called install. Uh, it does run nix and dash i. And you have uninstall, you have search, you have list and search. What I'm trying to say, I'm not saying this, let's put it into nix, right? wrong. This is easy way how to experiment. Let's package it and let's give it to a few users. Let's try to, uh, you know, like, that's the whole point. Like, maybe upgrade is a bad idea, right? But this is the way how yeah, we'll know sure. it. It's experiment, you know, people like to be test uh, uh, mouses, rabbits, <laughs> guinea pigs, yeah, that animal. No, not, not that interesting, but maybe instead of uh, infusing the idea of there is an upgrade into users, just say um, there is no upgrade version. Uh, if, if they ex execute Nix upgrade, let's say um, this comment doesn't exist, maybe you meant install instead of upgrade. Oh, yeah, like suggestions, that's so part of it. No, the semantics isn't even existing, please use the other one. But you know that upgrade exists, right? It's a oh, okay, but yeah. you know people are bad, like to do that. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. one more. Uh, I think that the Nix packages documentation should be updated more frequently, because <laughs> yeah. because like I use it as a reference for myself for stuff that I've written because I can't remember how to use it, mm -hmm. and so it's 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 really easy when you make a pull request that you put in a new function in Nix packages that you should just automatically go and edit the next package's documentation at the same time. I guess uh, in part of our pull request review process, we should also see, do we need to update, like that question, do we need to update the um, documentation, like the manual? Because that's, it, at least the manual always has to be perfect. That's at least, right? Then tutorials are nice to have, you know, beginners will like it, but yeah, that's, right. okay. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. So I think.